Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Entrepreneurial Mindset Show. My name is Florian Lungo. I'm so delighted that you join us today and I'm so delighted to share on this topic here. You know, my passion is entrepreneurship and I want to understand how successful entrepreneurs think. And because of that and, and through my experience working with entrepreneurs and business owners from all over the world, I realized that there are 12 different characteristics. There are 12 different mindsets that successful entrepreneurs, you know, excel at. And I kind of boil them down into into these 12 different uh, mindsets that we cover in the Entrepreneurial Mindset Show. So every week, we're going to cover one of these topics. And today, we're going to look at those people that are are good salespeople, that are persuading and, and, and influential. And, you know, In order for us to be successful entrepreneurs, we need to be able to influence other people, to persuade other people, right? And so I'm going to use some slides here, so we're going to have some support for our for our discussion here, and that that's for those of you who are uh, visual learners, right? And so I'm going to switch between the slides and and the camera, so as we go through the show. Thank you for joining us, and I'm sure you love this topic because I do love it, and I believe uh, I believe it's. It's essential to entrepreneurial success. But before we go into this persuasive mindset, right? Before we look at what people that have, you know, persuasion and influence excel at, let's look at what the mindset is, right? We now we need to, you know, kind of set the stage and the foundation for our future learning, right? So let's look at it. What mindset is? Mindset is a set of attitudes, beliefs, and expectations about a situation. Or an outcome. Think about that. A set of beliefs, expectations about the situation or an outcome. And, you know, you might ask yourself why it's so important. Well, the reason why it's important and it matters for us is because, think about that. If my expectation is that it's going to be hard for me in the marketplace, that if my expectation is that, you know, this task is going to take time. If my expectation is that it's going to take a lot of time until we find a founder or we find a, you know, someone that, an investor, right? If that's my expectation, well, we know that, you know, what we believe, you know, our expectations are, are based on our belief, right? We said mindset, it's a set of beliefs, expectations. And now, if I believe it's going to be hard, think about what kind of action would I take, right? Would I be, you know, wholeheartedly, you know, involved in taking action or would I be more careful? Because I know it's going to take time. I know it's going to be hard. So I'm not, I'm not wholeheartedly, you know, involved in that. And of course, because we don't take as much action as we could if we really believe that this is going to work, well, that reflects in our results. So that's why I believe it's so important that if we have the right mindset and if we have you know, develop these 12 different characteristics of a successful entrepreneur, you know, we'll be more likely to achieve our goals faster and with fewer mistakes. And that's what I want for you. And that's what I want for me. So the the challenge here is that mindset actually reflects and impacts everything we do. And that's why I believe mindset matters. And one of the codes that I really like, and it's close to my heart, it's very, you know, insightful, is from one of my mentors, Paul Schiele, and he says that, you know, over time, our mindsets become our habit of expecting about how you and the world operate. So, our mindset become the habit of expectation, of expecting, you know, how the world and we operate. And let me give you an example. For example, if you are a driver and if you drive a car, right? And if you have learned how to drive that car, at the very beginning, there were three pedals. You didn't even know. I mean, I know my experience. You didn't even know know, what's the role of these three pedals. You know, what do they do? You know, I have two feet and three pedals. I need to think about, you know, what pedal should I press? And then over time, you learn that if you press the accelerator pedal, then you move faster and you move forward, right? If you if you press the brake pedal, th- then you move slower, right? So so now the way I drove the car and I learned to drive the car, it, you know, it becomes a habit of expectation, which means that when I press the accelerator pedal, right, I expect the car to go faster. When I press the brake pedal, I expect the car to slow down. 
Well, that's an obvious example, but what if I got this wrong? What if the acceleration pedal is actually slowing me down? What if I'm in the reverse gear and if I accelerate, I move backwards rather than forwards? Right? Have it ever happened to you to, to maybe stop your car in, in reverse and then you want to take off, you want to move forward, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, oh it's going backwards. Why? Because I had an expectation, right? So, so the way I, I, I created this image for me and, and I created this habit of expecting, you know, I expect things to work in a certain way. And what if I'm wrong? What if I created an image of me based on my experience and of the world that is not necessarily true and is just my experience? That's why it's so important that we, we want to challenge what we think. And that's why it's so important that you tune in into this kind of uh, you know, shows that you challenge yourself. Okay, what do I believe about persuasion, right? The other day I post on, on LinkedIn about you know, that, that, you know, the power of persuasion, right? And, uh, and, and immediately someone commented, well, you know, for me, persuasion is, um, is manipulation. Well, I said, well, um, what makes you say that? You know, I, I found that we assign meaning to words and we assign meaning to things. And that creates our, the map of the world that we see. And so on this show, I, I hope that I'm going to challenge a little bit some of the things that you believe about yourself, some of the things that you believe about the world, and I'm going to you know, be able to at least give you a different perspective. So today we're going to look at the persuasive mindset. So this is, this is us understanding that um, you know, we're, we're not selling people into anything, but we're guiding people to a decision, right? So, so it's, it has a lot to do with sales, and as entrepreneurs, you know, you know one of the... Uh, one of the only, if you like, I believe, I believe arguably, sales is the only you know, income-producing activity in a business. So if you think about that, um, it isn't that important that us entrepreneurs, we know how to sell, and then we become what we call to be a sales professional. I think it is. And so when we think about persuasive mindset and influential mindset, this is not someone manipulating someone else, trying to convince people to make a decision that you know it's in your favor and might be even you know, detrimental for them. No, that's not at all. We're guiding people to a decision. It's like you know, a leader or a parent that sees something that the child doesn't yet see, and then the parent needs to use their persuasion and influence to persuade the child to make that decision. For example, you know, as a child, you know, there was a time in our lives when we didn't know that it's, it's dangerous to cross the road, right? There is traffic, right? And, and there are rules that you should cross on, on, on you know, on, on the cross, right? Not, not anywhere. Because I, I live in the, I, I grew up in the countryside. There were no cars there. I mean, there were, you know, very few cars and very seldom, right? We have carriages. They, were, they, don't, they don't drive that fast, right? So, I didn't develop that thing, but when I moved into the city, you know, my parents had to persuade me to, you know, wait, wait at the cross and, and then, and then, you know, look for traffic, look for the light and then cross in just specific places because I didn't know that is dangerous. My map of the world was that, well, roads are, are for carriages and for us to play. We were playing with the, with the, with the bikes and with, with all kinds of stuff that we created for, you know, toys that we created for ourselves. But I couldn't see that that was something dangerous. So my mom had to persuade me to do the things that, that she knew I need to do. But I couldn't see those for myself. I couldn't see that those might be some of the things that, you know, may, maybe, maybe would, would be dangerous for me. So what I'm saying here is that, um, what I'm saying here is that we are looking at this persuading mindset and we are looking at what can we do, what can we do to help people, guide people to a decision rather than trying to, you know, to sell people, you know, guide them to their decision. So let's, let's dive into it, right? Let's look at some of the quotes that I found on persuasion and let's look at, you know, how do this apply to our lives, right? So to look at this one here. So persuasion you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's more listening than, than actually, uh, you know, talking. Because, 
you know, many entrepreneurs might think, well, persuasion is manipulation, and I, I need to manipulate people to do this and that. And I don't, do, I don't think that that's the case. I think the case is here that we're having, um, you know, the the wrong understanding what persuasion is. Think about that. Nobody is more persuasive persuasive than a good listener. Think about that. Listening. Would you think that persuasion is about listening? Well, that was not the first thing that came to mind, and probably that was not the first thing that came to your mind. Now, th- that, that was one, one really good thing. Let's look at another one. Look what, what Jenny Mullen said. I think the power of persuasion would be the greatest superpower of all time. The power of persuasion will be the greatest superpower of all time. Look at this one. To be persuasive, we must be believable. And to be believable, we must be credible. And to be credible, we must be truthful. Think about that. So persuasion about being truthful and believable, right? We cannot persuade people to do things against their will, right? And so what happens in this case is, is that we change our perspective on, on what persuasion is because persuasion is not manipulation. As I shared with you, one of the first reactions someone had in you know at one of the posts was, well, you know, for me, persuasion is it's, uh, influencing people to take a decision that, that might be, you know, against their will or where I don't give them a choice. And, and that's not the case. Look at what's the difference between persuasion and manipulation. So I look at these two terms and I, and I found that, you know, persuasion comes from the Latin word persuader, and, and, and it's per, which means true or to completion, and suedere, which is advice. Like, in other words, is to advise someone true to an outcome or to help them get something to completion. And, and you know, persuasion is inducing someone to do something through reasoning or an argument, right? Versus manipulation, which is influencing or controlling someone to your advantage, and usually in an unfair manner. Think about that, right? That's why maybe some some of you might have a, a you know a, a wrong understanding of what persuasion is. And and I and uh, honestly, you know, I I didn't knew the difference between persuasion and and manipulation, right? For me, it was the same. But I had to go back and, and look at these words. And and I found that one thing that I can do in my life is, is that I can, uh, you know, unconsciously already I assign meaning to words. But now what I can do is also I can look at these words and I can redefine and reassign the meaning, you know, to, to these words. They, they don't need to stay the same. They don't need to be what I, you know, in the past uh, maybe learned from, from someone or from a situation. So that's, that's one of the things that we could do, you know. We, we could look at what's my expectation, what, what is my understanding of a word, persuasion. And and how is that serving me? And let let's look at let's let's analyze the word. That's why I look at the origin of the word to understand what it is, right? And and, it, and it's advising someone to take something to completion, right? That that, that was the the initial uh, the initial um, you know purpose of the word. And and in the same way, you know, looking at manipulation and and persuasion, we realize that they are completely different things. And we're not talking about manipulating people, right? We're talking about influencing them and ethically influencing them. So let's look at another one here. Uh, I think this is one of the reasons why I believe entrepreneurship and and uh, you know and persuasion go hand in hand because you cannot be a successful entrepreneur with ha- without having you know influence because you know you could have the best idea in the world. But if you don't have influence, and, and influence for me, it's another, it's another um, you know, level of persuasion. If you don't have persuasion, if you don't have influence, uh, it might be the best kept secret in the world, right? So for what good that I have you know, really good ideas and I have really good strategies that if I don't put them in the world, and if I put them in the world, but you know, um, I, I, I'm not... I don't have influence. I'm not influential. You know, think about what influence means in today's world. Think about you're watching this, uh, you know, on on a social media channel. You're either um, go streaming this now on YouTube and Facebook. You might be on YouTube. You might be on Facebook. You might be on our website at entrepreneurialmindsetshow.com. You know, wherever you are right now, you know, th- that's one of the channels through which you you get information and and we communicate in today's world. And think about that. What does it mean to be an influencer or someone to have influence in today's world? Well, what it means is that, 
you know, they have attention, right? In today's world, influence means attention, right? Think about that. What do influencers do, right? Influencers have the attention of their following. And you and I, as entrepreneurs, we need to have the attention of the, our, our audience in order for us to be able to even pass on the message that we want to pass on. You, you might have the best idea in the world, but if, you, if no one listens to you, if, if no one, you know, uh, if you cannot reach the people that you want to reach, then you, 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 you don't really, you are not an entrepreneur. You cannot bring your idea to fruition. In the past, think about it, in the past, all this was done in networking events or, or, or in gatherings, right? So people would gather in the village or, or in, you know, in those uh, different clubs. And what happened is that there, there would be, there would be you know, some opinion makers. There would be some, some informal leaders and some formal leaders that will be, you know, influencing the, the, the masses or the decision in, in that room, right? Now, you know, it's, it's on the internet. Now it's on the internet, it's social media. Now this, how, this is how, you know, elections are win. This is how, um, you know, everything is done in the online world. So think about that. What does it mean to have influence, to be persuading, right, in the online world? It means to have, the peop- to have people's attention. And that's what we want to, to look at here. Okay. What can you, how can you, you know, have people's attention? How can you build influence, right? That's why I believe that if you don't have influence, um, you know, your idea might be the best kept secret in the world. No one will know about it, right? So let, let's look at what influence is, right? The very essence of all power to influence lies in getting the other person to participate, right? Think about that. The very essence of all power to influence lies in getting the other person to participate. I think this is so true. Think about what what does it mean to have even a even a, a prospecting conversation, a, a sales conversation. If you're not able to make the other person participate in a conversation, then you don't have a conversation. You have a a monologue. You you're talking. They don't listen, even if they might be you know physically there. And that was a lot easier when you were in the real world, right? In the real world, you meet face to face. It's a lot it's a lot harder for people to tune out when they are you know in uh, in in the real world. But but. Now, maybe on Zoom, and they say, well, I, could, I need to stop my camera because whatever happens, uh, you know, or, or, or they're not with video. You don't even know what happens. And they tune in a, a lot easier. But persuasion and influence, having influence upon the other person, uh, you know, it, it, it has them tune in and, and participate. And that's what we want. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about influence and persuasion, right? This is what we want as entrepreneurs. We need to develop these, these, uh, these skills. And another skill that we need to develop as entrepreneurs, we need to be a good leader, right? And think about what, what John Maxwell says, right? He says that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And I believe, I believe entrepreneurship requires leadership. As entrepreneurs, you need to be a leader. Because think about that. If you are now maybe at the beginning of your journey, and if you are alone, and you have not yet started to build a team, but the moment you build a team, in that very moment, you kind of your role changes. You give up the the you know the role of the maybe the the thinker or or the creator, the inventor you had in the very beginning. Now, now you you need to become a leader. You now now you need to lead people. And so I I don't believe there is any you know any successful entrepreneur that is not good at leadership, or at least. They have not, you know, built a leadership team around them. That 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 team is is good at leading people. But even even though, in order for you and I to create a leadership team that is, you know, good at leading people, we need to have that awareness to be able to recruit those people. So we need to be a leader for them to want to work with us. Does it make sense? Yeah. So so I I really believe that leadership it's a huge part. Of, um, of of being part uh, of being a successful entrepreneur, and now look, let's look at some things that that you know help us create you know influence and and, and become a, a successful entrepreneur. Let's look at you know uh, what John Maxwell shares with us as being one of the the list of uh, you know things that we we build leadership on and we build influence on. And so the first one here is character, right? This is about who you are, right? Uh, how can you how can you 
you know, persuade people? How can you influence people? What do you use? Which one of these characteristics do you use? Relationships is who you know, right? Knowledge, what you know. Intuition, what you feel. Like, do you, do you use your intuition to, to persuade and, and influence people, right? Do you use your experience? Do you use your past successes? Or do you use your abilities? Right? So think about these seven different characteristics and seven different things that you could use to create you know, influence and to become a more influential person. And, and th- look, at, look at where you are. Right? I used to, to, to use my, my knowledge and, and my ability because I didn't have experience. I didn't have experience as an entrepreneur. I didn't have experience as a leader. So at the very beginning, I need to use my knowledge. Right? So I had knowledge. I was a really good technical person. Because I was a really good technical person, I could... I could you know differentiate myself from the rest, right? And then I had the ability to bring results, right? So I used my knowledge and my ability, but that was not enough, right? I needed to create, uh, you know, some experiences. I, I needed to have some past results, but I needed to start with something. So at the very beginning, for me, it was knowledge and ability. But then I was able to develop those two, the, 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 other, the other two, because, you know, I started to, to build relationships, right? I started to know people. I, I share when I first came to Sweden and I started my business. I didn't have any network. I didn't know anybody here. But but then I, I started to build my, my network. Now, I don't rely only on my network. But, you know, what John Maxwell says is that we should analyze where we are. You know, what, what, or, what of these, which one of these, you know, characteristics are we using to persuade and influence people? And look at those that maybe score low and, and you know, see how can we increase our, our ability uh, in those areas, how can we increase there, right? So, think about these ones. You know, which one are dominant for you? Which one do you rely on when you, when you, um, you know, when you work with people, when you influence people, when you want to have people follow you? And then look for where can you, you know, improve on those that score low. We're gonna come back to this one at the end of the at the, at the end of the presentation, but let's look at you know um, I just I just said um, earlier that one of the you know the only productive because if you look at this persuasion and influence this persuasion and influence shows up in two places. Now we look at you know persuading and influencing people to follow you. So this is you building your team, right? And the second thing where we need to use this persuasive, uh, you know, mindset and, and influence is in sales, right? And and you know that we just we just kind of agreed, or I, I share with you my belief that sales, it's arguably the only income-producing activity. And and the challenge is that, you know, most business owners do not see that, and most business owners do not see themselves as sales professionals. What I mean by that is that they don't really see themselves as, as needing to acquire leadership um, sales skills, and they really, you know, being able to um, t- to really get good at sales, right? Being able to influence and persuade people to, you know, to purchase their products or services, and so so most business owners do not see themselves as sales professionals, right? And, and and that's a challenge, right? That's a challenge because think about what does it mean to be a sales professional. It means that you really take things seriously. Think about, you know, a medical doctor, for example, right? If you think about a medical doctor, you know, in order for someone to be a medical doctor, they need to go through some training, right? They need, to, in order for you to, to, to be a professional coach, for example, I needed to go to a certification program, right? Think about how many business owners, you know, rely on sales, right? Because if sales is the only producing activity in, in, in income producing activity in a business, and we rely on sales, right? But we don't take the time to really invest in sales training and train ourselves uh, to really get good at sales, then they're really, we are jeopardizing. We are, we are you know, we're playing the, the Russian roulette with, with, with our businesses, right? So being a sales professional, you invest time and money to to really get good at that, right? Because here is why sales, it's, it's so depending on your ability to influence other people. Because at his highest, at his highest level, sales is the transference of emotion. 
right? And the and the primary emotion that we have to transfer it's certainty, right? So think about it. Sales at its highest level is the transfers of emotion, and the primary emotion that we have to transfer from the buyer, uh, fr- from from the seller, right? From ourselves to the buyer, it's certainty. Right, and you will ask, okay, Florian, certainty in what? Yeah, that's exactly what we ask ourselves too. Cer- certainty in what? Well, there are three things that that we need to to um, um, we, we need to pass on the certainty into. Okay, so as a self person, your job is to transfer certainty to the buyer in number one, you as a sales professional. Think about that. So, in order for someone to purchase something. Right, um, to buy into your idea, we make decisions emotionally, and then we reason those decisions using our reasoning mind to kind of explain and and then explain for ourselves why why did we make that decision, right? So so most people might think, well, we that's not a logical decision to buy this pair of shoes or you know to invest in that program. Well. It doesn't matter because most of the time we don't make decision logical, right? There, there might be very, very many reasons, logical reasons for you to buy this car over the other one, but you still buy the one that you feel good about, the one that you, to make you feel in a certain way, right? That that will give you that confidence, that um, that feeling that you're looking for. And so when we make this decision emotionally. In order for someone to make that decision, to take them, you know, over, you know, the, the threshold of, 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 you know, becoming from a, from a prospect to a client, we need to transfer this emotion, right? The emotion of certainty, right? Think about what people look for today in today's world after COVID, right? So, uh, we, we, we say that before COVID is, is, is in the BC era, now it's after COVID, right? So a, in the AC era, people look for, for safety, right? People, people need to, to feel that they, say, they are safe, right? And this is one of the things that, you know, hotels, restaurants, and, and, and businesses like that make sure that they pass on to their clients. And, and it's not enough for, for you and I to say that, uh, you know, that, you know, this is a safe place to be, they have to show it, right? They have to show it by the measure that they take. And when you go into a restaurant, you have to see that people are, you know, um, advised to maybe, um, you know, wash their hands or, or maybe use use hand sanitizer or, or they spray the, the, you know, the tables. That's the way you show people, right? So you are able to pass on from you as a, you know, in, in this case, the seller being a restaurant, to your client being the buyer, the this feeling of safety, right? Because this is what people look like, look, look for. When you think about now certainty, right? For someone to be able to make a decision to purchase something or to invest into something, they need to be certain that that's the best decision. They need to be certain that that decision is the decision that they have to make. And in, in order for someone to be certain, they need to be certain in three things. They need to be certain in you, as a sales professional, as an entrepreneur, that you are trustworthy, that you can deliver what you say you can deliver, right? And and that that your solution is actually what they're what they're looking for. So the first thing is you, the sales professional. The second thing is the product or service that you sell, and the third thing is the company that you represent. So think about that. In order for someone to move from a prospect to a buyer. They need to have certainty in these three things. And as sales professional, you know, as, as, a, as an entrepreneur that understands the importance of sales, from where do you think your prospect can, can take that certainty, right? From where, right? Would they go to the marketplace and, and to, to, the, to, the, to the market, to the supermarket and buy more certainty? No. The only, you know, the only place from where they can get that certainty is from you, right? So, so that's why when you create your, your you know, sales conversation, your sales script, right? And this is something that, that you know, we help entrepreneurs in, in our sales program. When you do that, you need to make sure that you, you know, hit all of these points in your, in your presentation, that you give them certainty in yourself, you, 
you give certainty in, in the company, that the company would be around when they need the customer support, and then that your service or product solves their problem. Absolutely, 100%. And if they don't have 100% certainty in these three things, they'll give you an objection. They'll give you an objection. And, and we say that objections are smoke screen for uncertainty, right? Objection is smoke screen for uncertainty. They are uncertain. And it's our job as sales professional to influence them, to persuade them, to you know transfer this certainty to them. So they are confident that this is actually the best decision. So how can you build certainty? These are four ways you could build certainty. Now I don't have that I don't have at my command the time to go deep in this one, but then let's go you know you know uh, over them. The first one is you are sharp as a tack, right? I mean, you know your stuff. You you are to the point. You you're not wobbling. You you're not you're not just uh, talking about uh, you know the the weather or or the price of of tea in China. You you are when you are in a sales conversation when you are presenting your idea, your business. You're to the point, right? You, you value your time and you value their time. Number one, number two here is that you're enthusiastic about what it is that you have to offer. Now, we're not talking about to be overly enthusiastic and ah, that's not the point. Point here is you are enthusiastic. You're, you're, you cannot wait for, for, for you to share that. You know that what you have is so good that you cannot wait to share it with them. Number three is you're an expert. And because you're an expert, you know, your time matters, right? So you don't you don't go over time, you don't plan, you know, one hour meetings and, and then you go one hour or 50 minutes, you don't plan, you, you work in 50 minute slots. And when you do that, you know, what, what does it mean to be an expert? Well, when you go to see your lawyer, when you go to see your your doctor, you don't want them to, to make jokes, you know, you don't want them to, you know, oh, let's have a coffee. That's not why you go to see the doctor. You go to see the doctor because you, you, they're an expert and you need their expertise, right? So you don't want to, if you want to show that you are an expert, you're not going to waste time and let let people, you know, wander in areas that, you know, they have nothing to do with your conversation or the, the reason why you're meeting. You, you direct them back to the conversation, right? And, and number four here is that you control that conversation. I just said, you know, you control the conversation. You're not an expert, and because you're an expert, you control the conversation. You don't let the conversation to go wherever, uh, wherever the clients take it. In order to do all this well, you need to listen, right? That's kind of the the the, the fifth point here. How can you build this uh, certainty and credibility? Well, you build it with with listening, because one of the things that you know we 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 do in our sales training, we say. After, after, you know, the, the first discussion where it's kind of the discovery meeting when we see what the, what the client's needs are, you know, the way we transition is, is to the next piece is, Florian, based on everything you told me, I believe you are a perfect fit for our solution. And let me tell you why. And how can I say you are, I believe, based on everything you told me, I believe you're a perfect fit. How can I say that if I don't listen? So listening, it's it's part of persuasion and, and as part of influence. So that's why if you want to build influence with other people, you have to listen because here is what I know. People will never listen until they've been heard. People will not listen to what you have to say until they had a chance to speak. So you listen to them. So they listen to you. And that's one of the, the challenges and one of the biggest mistakes, you know, many entrepreneurs do and even salespeople do is that they go into their pitch. They go into their presentation. They, they prepare slides, you know. Who cares about what you have on your slides? You haven't even asked them what's their need, you know, what it is that they need help with. So I really believe that if we develop this influence and, and this, uh, you know, persuading mindset, we can really... We can really accelerate our growth. We can really accelerate the, the growth of our business. And, and we're going to do this ethically because all, you, all you've all seen up until now is not about manipulating people. It's about influencing people. And how can we develop this persuasive mindset? How can we be, become more, more influential? Well, 
it's, it's going back to, to what, what uh, John just shared. So he shared this list of things that we could do or ways that we could use to influence, uh, you know, people and, and lead people. And, and, you know, analyze. Look at this, this list. Rate yourself between 1 and 10. 1 means that, you know, this is not a factor at all in your influence, that you don't use it at all. And 10 being that you continually rely on it. For example, if you rely on your relationship, right? So all that matters for you maybe is your network and you rely on your relationships. And in order for you to be able to build influence with other people and lead other people and, you know, um, develop your ideas, you you rely on, on your network. Then that's one of the things that you use all the time. But the challenge here is that you don't want to rely on only one of those things because you could increase your influence by developing the others, right? So now the question that you want to ask yourself is how can you optimize and or, or better utilize those that have low scores, right? So for example, as I shared at the very beginning, you know, I I I, I was using my knowledge, my ability, I, I you know, then I built my character, right? And and people started to follow me just because of who I am, right? So if you are able to maximize all of those different factors, you'll be able to become more influenced and, and you'll have more persuasion. And and you know what? The the pinnacle of what we're trying to achieve here is what is what this code summarized here. Think about this one. Elegant persuasion is when the other person thought it was their idea. Let that sink a little bit. Ethical and elegant persuasion is when the other person thought it was their idea. That's so good. And that's what we want to do. So when we when we are in a sales conversation, when we are pitching our idea, we want to be able to persuade people in such a way that they feel this is a fit for them. And then we are able to pass this certainty to them in us, in the product, in the service, in the company. And if we do that, we're gonna we're gonna maximize our results, we're gonna reach further. We're going to be able to reach results that we never thought are possible for us. And I hope this added value to you. I hope you got something interesting from here. I hope you had some ideas. And for those of you who want to have the, the participant guide for this one, maybe to take time to rate yourself on those characteristics, you know, uh, look at entrepreneurialmindsetshow.com, entrepreneurialmindsetshow.com, and there you'd be able to, you know, see the replay of this of this show and also get the participant guide so you could feel uh, you know the the take notes on it when when you look through when you look at the lesson when you listen in the lesson and um, and you get notified for when we when when the next episode goes live and for those of you who want to tune in into Facebook and and uh, YouTube so next week we're going to talk about the visionary mindset right and moving from my vision to our vision and helping others to see